Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Song Theory and today we are talking about Mac Miller's latest, last album, Circles. Now I'm talking about this because obviously I've made content about Mac Miller before, please go and take a look at that above. But I'm talking about this as well because I listened to the album like two and a half times at this point. And it is fantastic. I'm talking about from the very beginning song, Circles, all the way to uh, Hands On. And I mean, just we're going to go through it, but I just want to let you guys know, please go, go listen to the album. It is magnificent. We're going to get right into why that is the case. So as you all know, Mac Miller uh, passed away a few years ago um, from a drug overdose. And, uh, you know, this was actually shortly right on the heels of him and Ariana Grande uh, ending their years long relationship and in the album circles you can really hear uh, the pain in his voice uh, considering everything he went through um, with Ariana Grande and going through a situation in which uh, he just was not comfortable he wasn't um, feeling like himself and quite frankly also after Ariana Grande had gotten with uh, Pete Davidson I, I feel as though that a, a lot of people at this point have really made the, the um, had really made the observation that that had a lot to do with what was going on with him. Now, as I said before, I did make a, a video about his death. I made a video about some of the music he was making. Um, and there was a song that he came out with called Self Care. I talked about how that had a lot to do um, with, uh, the music had a lot to do with his life. And so this album, Circles, is just a continuation of that. And it's interesting because his family had decided to release this album. Um, after all this time and you can tell by listening to the album melodically, uh, aesthetically, um, conceptually that this whole entire album was made by Mac Miller. And I say that on purpose because I made another video about um, Juice World and how they're going to take his music, his voice, and, and take little clips and snippets of him and turn it into music. But the reason why I appreciate this album from Mac Miller Circles is because you can tell every single song was polished perfected and you could tell he had a hand in every single song so starting with the first song circles um it was magnificent uh, it was nice slow melodic um and it was one of those songs where you really could hear his singing voice i was shocked by how well mac miller could sing i know a lot of his songs and many of them he did just normal hip-hop rap boom bap you name it but to hear him really truly sing, I'm talking about hitting high notes and stuff like that, I was I was shocked. It was fantastic. And, and, and of course, I'm disappointed because, once again, this is his last album. We don't know of any more music that he has, um, but, I mean, it's just disappointing to know that he'll never be able to make another song uh, like that again. And, and just to hear um, some of the lyrics in this music that he made uh, is just... It's heartbreaking because you can hear the struggle he was going through. So, Circles was the first song. Complicated, the next song. I love the melody of that as well. I got a lot of Coldplay vibes from some of his songs, which I thought was interesting. Um, I think Coldplay circa 2009 and before is kind of some of the vibes I was getting from him. Very slow, um, you know, very, you know, grave, lower voice, really kind of getting the message across by... Um, allowing the melody to carry and it was just fantastic uh, complicated and, and it's, it's hard for me to talk about it because it's just you know anytime I talk about a, an album or, or lyrics or something like that I talk about it with excitement because I'm, I'm always ready to hear the next thing this artist has you know for us as the audience but you know just going through this review is difficult because it's it he will not make another album again I do not have the opportunity to hear what else he might conceptualize or make and that's that's hard the next song was blue world honestly i actually believe blue world was one of my favorite songs musically not lyrically i, I think musically was one of my favorite songs it had a fantastic vibe it had a fan it was just great i mean it's one of those songs you drive down the street to the beat is fantastic the the i mean just the synth chords they're hitting so well and one of the lines that he said in in the song um, Blue World is uh, we are riding around listening to us. That's it. Um, it. I think the line was, what was it? Me and my girl, we riding around listening to us. That's it. 
this line I think was interesting because he was, I believe he was talking about Ariana Grande and how they used to hang out together and most of the song was just about the relationship and how they would interact with each other which was great. But I think that part in particular was about how they used to sit in the car, listen to their own music together and, and even maybe critiquing each other and telling each other some things they like or maybe some things they could work on musically. And now, you know, sitting in retrospect and listening to this music, listening to Blue World, it made me realize that Ariana Grande and Mac Miller's relationship was a lot deeper than we think it might have been. I think they were not only lovers, but they were friends, best friends, in fact. And they were also each other's cheerleaders when it comes to music. Um, Ariana Grande and Mac Miller possibly even coached each other on how to make certain songs, how to make music, and really it wouldn't even surprise me if um, if I dug deeper into some songs that Mac Miller made, some songs that Ariana Grande made, I would not be surprised if they have writing credits on each other's work. I wouldn't be surprised if, even if not credited, Mac Miller and Ariana Grande sat by each other in the studio making music, giving pointers, giving advice. To hear something like that in this song um, that he made after, you know, of course, after his death, it really made me realize that their relationship uh, was way deeper, uh, I think, than a lot of us thought it would have been um, otherwise. And so the next song after Blue World was Good News. Good News was rough to listen to because Good News was a huge part of uh, essentially the song in, in the chorus. It spoke about how people only want to hear good news. Nobody wants to know when you're down. Nobody cares. They only want you to keep moving forward and benefiting them. And so in that song, he also had a line that said, so tired of being so tired. Why I gotta go build something beautiful just to set it on fire. Uh, he also said, I haven't seen the sun in a while, but I heard the sky is still blue. And that's so sad because, I mean, just listening to those lyrics, it's like, this guy, I mean, was going through so much to the point where he felt like he was going to destroy whatever it is that he saw as beautiful. He, he felt as though he was going to set it on fire. And so going back to Ariana Grande and him and their relationship, I think he was speaking about their relationship. I don't know the details. I don't know all of the, you know, the little bits and pieces of their relationship, but I do believe that this speaks a lot not only about his own success, but about what happened between those two, him and Ariana Grande, I believe that that line was a lot about the mistakes that he had made in that relationship and just saying, you know, how dare I create something so fabulous, uh, you know, be a part of something so great just to tear it all apart, you know? And then, of course, after that line, he speaks about how he hasn't seen the sun in a while, but he heard that the sky is still blue. What that means to me, you know, analyzing the song and the lyrics, what that means to me is that this guy had been in such a terrible place that people started talking to him, trying to get him out of this place. I do believe he started having people come by and, you know, talk to him. And I think what that means to me is people would walk in in his darkness and they would let him know, like, listen, life is still good. There are still things out there that you can do. You can still fix this. And, and what that means to me, once again, is that the people that came to him were letting him know there's still there's still a blue sky out there. There's still good things to look at. But when you're in a deep depression or you're going through mental illness, you know, it doesn't matter how often people tell you it's okay or you'll, you'll, it'll all be all right. Looking and listening to Mac Miller's lyrics, I can tell you for almost a 99% certainty, I mean, I'm pretty certain that he had and was suffering from depression. Clinical, straight up, 100% depression. And... It's so upsetting to me once again to, to look at these, listen to these lyrics and to know like this guy was just struggling so much. Um, but listening to it and as a piece of art, I appreciate it totally. And it, it's just, it's really refreshing and it was really nice to listen to. The next song after that was I Can See, fabulous song once again. I loved it, um, thought it was great melodically. Uh, the next song after that was uh, Everybody. Everybody was good too. Um, I think that it, there wasn't much there in terms of lyrics. Um, however, and I just want to say this.
Every song had fantastic music, but I think one, I think what I would do is to, to talk about the ones that hit me the most, really. I would have to talk about Hand Me Downs. Hand Me Downs was the best singing and verses I had heard from Mac Miller. Um, it was just like the way it hit, once again, please go listen to it, Hand Me Downs. The way it hit was just great. I, and I thought it was interesting because I feel as though there was a feature there. Singing the chorus that was not Mac Miller. All the rest of his music that he's singing on the rest of his album, all of that is straight 100% Mac Miller. But that particular part in that song did not sound like him. I do wonder who that was, because I, I know for sure that wasn't uh, Mac Miller doing that. Um, and the last song I think I'll talk about is Hands On. Hands On was great because there was a line in there where he said, if you draw me from my, if you, if you drop me, from my high horse, I might fall to my death. And that was intense to listen to as well because it gave you an understanding that he was in such a place where he thought he was somebody that he wasn't. And I think that just being in a place of depression and, and listening to his own mindset and how he was destroying himself from the inside, for someone to come and talk about him and uh, disturb his peace in some way outside of himself, I think was a great indicator of his mental state. And how he said, if I fall from my high horse, I might die. And once again, everybody, please go listen to the entire album. I'm just giving you some of my thoughts on it. Obviously, I would love if you all go listen to it for yourself. This was a fantastic album. I'm very sad that he's gone. I wish upon a star uh, that this didn't happen this way and uh, that he could make more music, but he can't. So I hope all of you go enjoy uh, Mac Miller's album Circles. And of course, uh, once again from here at Song Theory, we thank you so much for watching. Once again, please go listen to the album. It's so great. I can't even express it. I mean, I'm talking 9 out of 10 here. 9 out of 10, honestly. I love you guys. Have a great day, better tomorrow. God bless. I'll see you all later.